Hello, welcome back to the Impact Lounge Review. At the Impact Lounge, I'm your host, Adam, and as always, I am joined by Ro. Good day to you, Ro. Good evening on my end, Adam. How's it going? Yeah, it's all good at this end as well. And I'd just like to to let our listeners know as well that uh, this will be my last review for a couple of weeks. So Ro is going to be getting in a replacement uh, for the next fortnight, whilst I'll take my uh, summer vacation uh, away in sunny Mexico. So if any of our listeners know of any wrestling going on near Cancun, drop us a comment below and uh, I'll see if I can go check it out. But uh, yeah, thanks for all your comments as always. And um, as I always say every week, if this is the first time you're stopping by the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button, leave us some comments, give us a thumbs up, give us a thumbs down. Uh, just any interaction is good interaction. And we got loads and loads of comments last week. It was actually amazing. We, we got to 50 comments really, really quickly last week and then it just stopped. But keep checking back in on the channels because Ro and I do try and comment on, on your and uh, reply to your comments as well. So, yeah, let's keep that interaction going and let's try and get the, the thumbs up and the thumbs down over the 50 mark this week as well. So, um, yeah. If for those not familiar with how we review the show, which we'll get to into in a second, we always uh, start off, first of all, by answering your well, the reader's questions or listener's questions and also giving you a trivia question. So last week's was Rose trivia question. So what was the answer, Ro? Yes, the answer was Conan. So credit to Richard Cartledge and... I forgot the other person who had got it right, but the three clues were I was part of one of the biggest professional wrestling groups in professional wrestling, which is the NWO. And then I, I actually, and I apologize, I said led three different tag teams to tag team championships when actually he only led LAX because he won the tag titles with the Filthy Animals and then he also won won them with three life crew and then finally of course and this is the one adam and i've seen some others i think is what kind of threw them off i said the move that he uses is something that if you had too many in reality you know you might black out that was in reference to the tequila sunrise which is an alcoholic beverage and of course if you have one too many you know depending on your tolerance you might black out so congratulations to richard cartledge and the other person who got it right, I apologize for not knowing your name in advance. Yes, yeah, so uh, just as Rose said there, what it, the reason why I went for James Storm, my answer was uh, because I thought the last call, I thought that fitted in with uh, having too many drinks as well. But uh, yeah, so this week, anyway, it's my, my trivia question and uh, it's another who am I? So uh, the clues this week are I appeared as one of... Um, the first few contestants, I wasn't the first, but I was one of the first few contestants on Gut Check Challenge uh, when it was formerly TNA uh, in a losing effort to Austin Aries. Now, although I didn't get signed at the time, that wasn't the last time I appeared on TNA because I kept on appearing at ringside, angling for a contract uh, and spoiling matches, those kind of things. I eventually signed the contract in the ring thinking that I'd now made it into TNA, but it wasn't a contract. It was for one match only at Bound for Glory. And the final clue was that my finisher is one of the most famous finishers on the indie scene at the moment. And uh, it has been sponsored at one point by an adult website. So there you go. I was a TNA gut check uh, contestant uh, in a losing effort to Austin Aries. I thought I'd sign a contract, but it was a match of Bound for Glory. And my final clue is that my finisher has been sponsored by an adult website. Hopefully you'll get that. I think it's a bit easier this week. Uh, and uh, yeah, we'd like to see lots of comments. Let's see if anyone can beat Richard Carton this week to the right answer. So um, yeah, the other thing we do, as I said, is, is we also talk uh, through some of the questions that, that, that came on uh, this week's uh, or last week's show. So one of the things we, we're going to do before we do that, though, because Ro mentioned it and he said it, it might be worthwhile answering because uh, it, because of the timing of it, we were surprised we didn't get a question on it, but we thought we'd answer it anyway. So, Ro, Big Cass has been released. Enzo has been released. They were super over at one point on WWE and they're now independent contractors. What do you think? Are they going to show up in the impact zone? I hope not. I think what impact needs to do, they need to kind of have the mindset of, 
you know, is it going to be worth the, I, I want to say so much, to, I guess, yeah, the tolerance. Is them bringing on board, are they going to change life for impact, whether it's the ratings, you know, getting more uh, viewership, you know, et cetera. If you feel like those guys can do that, then okay. But I don't think they can. And I think what Impact needs to do, they need to go after a high character type of wrestlers. You know, I mean, I'm all for giving somebody a second chance and whatnot. But, you know, at least wait, let them go somewhere else and see how they do before you decide to bring them on board. I just think bringing them on board, I don't think they would move the needle, so to speak. Yeah, I, I, well, I don't think there's anyone out there that could move the needle. The, the only two, um, and there's a question for the audience, actually. The only two I think that could move the needle would be CM Punk, although I don't think he would ever turn back up in Impact, uh, and I don't think they could afford him. And possibly JR. I think he might be one of the, the few others who could, you know, getting him on commentary. Not that I, I think they particularly need it, but I think they're about the only two I think would get people tuning in to see how, how they do. Uh, but for someone like Enzo and Cass, um, Enzo... I think people might tune in because of the, n n I can't say it, the notor <laughs> yeah, the scandal. <laughs> I can't say the word this morning. I don't know what's wrong with me. Yeah, the scandal surrounding him. I mean, he, he's great on the mic and he would fit in the X Division quite well. But um, I think that an ego like that in the dressing room would be toxic. Uh, and I would like to see him there. Same with Cass. Apparently, he's, he's got, you know, he had heat backstage in WWE. I think he, would make a you know he could be a main event because he's massive you know um but i don't really see the money they would need to spend to bring these guys in whether they would add any value to the roster because the tag team division is looking quite good you know the x division is looking all right there's people who can speak on the mic and don't get enough time as it is i just think that it would be it would be like putting the title on Pentagon again. You know, it's one of those things to get the internet talking. And at this point, I don't think that's what's going to help impact. I think they just need to carry on doing what they're doing. So, yeah. So to answer my own question or our own question, um, I think think either of us want to see them in impact. So yeah, fast forward, they're bound to be at Slammiversary. <laughs> right. <laughs> okay. So what were the questions that we had this week? Um, we'll we'll do this one first from uh, J Rock Freak. Uh, who asked a very specific question and and I, I say we're going to start with this one because i don't think we've got really much insight into this but it was asked so we'll, we'll, we'll go with it so his question was do you think impact should try and build a relationship with the japanese women promotions like stardom um just to pick up on this quickly i i really don't know much about japanese women's federations i've seen some matches i saw that one where that there's a there's a woman wrestler out there in japan who who then he killed someone in the ring and went to town, you know, and and uh, really beat someone up and blinded someone. So, um, not that <laughs> I'm not suggesting that all, all Japanese wrestlers are like that, but I, I do think that, that the language barrier would be hard. And at the moment, the the knockout division is in such a place that I don't think they need anyone to come in, no matter how good they are technically in the ring. I don't think they need anyone to come in from a Japanese promotion uh, to, to help because I think they've got the knockout division just right. I mean, I guess I can't see that it, it would be it would hurt, especially when you think of the state of the knockouts division at this time where, you know, a lot of the top names are on the shelf. So I guess when you're talking about these partnerships, it's essentially a talent exchange. So maybe like say someone like a Kiera Hogan that you're trying to develop so she could be the next big knockout. If you have a partnership as such, you could send her send her over there where she'll have the ability to work more matches and and impact can always air this stuff on impact programming like they've been doing with some of these partnerships so i mean i don't know i mean i i just look at some of these as you know if they can take advantage of some of these par partnerships and it's beneficial for you know both companies then go at it but we just seen most recently uh noah is now in partnership with wwe so i don't know what that does to impact's partnership with noah but, you know, with the partnerships that they do still have re remaining, you know, just make the most of it, you know, and it's just it's just make it where it's beneficial to both. So, I mean, I don't have a problem with it when you're talking about as far as bringing some of the talent over. But then, too, once again, the, you run the risk of disappointing them if you bring their talent over and you're having them essentially lose to impact talent. And then, you know, you'll have a problem, obviously, with the impact talent if you're bringing these p 
people over and having the impact talent lose to them. So, I mean, as long as it's something that's beneficial to both parties, then there's no problem with it. Yeah, absolutely. And you mentioned WWE there. I believe that they're going to be trying to do something like uh, uh, the Global Wrestling Network in tying up with promotions and having unsigned talent on their channel. So, <laughs> Uh, I mean, it's just a blatant copy, but, you know, unfortunately, I think they'll have the star power and might tempt some of these these divisions. But anyway, uh, I suppose imitation is the sincerest form of flattery. So on to our next question. What what have you got for us, Ro? Yes, this one's from Luke Avery, and it was, if Impact Wrestling was to get a new television deal with a bigger network, do you think it's possible for them to have two shows, the main one on the bigger network and Explosion on Pop TV, if Pop still wanted to keep Impact Wrestling on their network? Um, my take on it is this: If they're gonna get a second show, it's gonna be on Pop. I'm in that. I've seen. I know a lot of fans would like to see Impact get on a bigger network. It remains to be seen. I'm of the mindset that wrestling isn't as attractive as it was when you're talking about during the WCW days. I think now you know it's WWE and then everything else. So. I, I think staying, you know, and then, and then too, you look at some of the ratings and, you know, the viewership, I don't, and I hate to come across as being, you know, negative Nelly, but I don't think the, the ratings and the viewership that Impact gets warrants a second show. I think Impact, if it was drawing solid numbers, and I don't know what numbers, uh, I'm obviously uh, Pop TV's happy with what they're bringing in, but I think to have a second show, you know the impact the the flagship program would need to bring in a significant amount of uh, viewership to warrant a second show so i guess to answer your question i don't i think if they're going to get two shows it'd probably just stay on pop i can't see them getting you know moving to another network have impact the flagship show be on the other network while then trying to have pop tv keep explosion i just you know i would think pop tv would want impact and then maybe the second show or explosion or whatever else be on another network I mean, it'd be great if they did get a second show, but I mean, that, that would just so they could advance storylines. I think they're doing fine keeping all the talent they've got. If they did go second show, they'd need more active wrestlers signed to the main roster, those kind of things. Um, it would be great, but it's baby steps. I don't think they need it at this point. You know, maybe they could do more of Explosion, you know, advertise that a bit better. But yeah, I, I don't think they need an extra show at the moment uh, unless they have intentions of, of um, you know, having more wrestlers on their roster i think they've got it just about right and you get into that territory of of once again wasting money that they don't seem to have and you know then the tapings become longer those kind of things or they have to become more frequent it becomes more expensive and if they're not recouping that on the tv rights then i don't know if it's the right move for them i think they need to grow to it to you know get back on track get people believing in the product again before they do it but you know if it's more impact on television fantastic but i just don't think it's the right time for them yeah so thanks i to I, I, I i was gonna say sorry i just want to say i agree and i think if anything using explosion as a second show um, just change the format because if you I don't know if you follow explosion, but they really have just one match They have around the ring. They have the GWN classic and then they have uh, the impact rewind Maybe if you eliminate I guess you eliminate the GWN classic and put two matches because a lot of the people who who perform on impact are you know lower level talent or you know up you know lower to upper mid level talent i mean i think i want to say months ago they had rosemary which was refreshing but i would say use explosion as a second show and i mean it's on the gwn app so yeah yep so final question before we dive into the review uh was from richard cartledge who asked about do you think that impact is getting a little unsafe considering how many injuries there have been recently and uh sorry to take this one again but uh i just I think it's unlucky. Uh, I mean, the Rosemary thing, I, I don't even know if it happened in a, an impact ring. You know, the Eddie Edwards thing, it was a freak accident. But at the same time, you know, they've really turned it to their advantage. So I, I would say at the moment, I don't think it's anything to do with the impact ring being unsafe or, you know, or the booking, those kind of things. I think the one accident that was unsafe was the, the, the Eddie Edwards one with, with Sammy Cannon. Everything else could have happened in any ring at any time. So I don't think so. No. 
Nah, um, you know, the one thing I've always thought, and this is stemming back to the TNA days, was for the most part, it seems like wrestlers weren't getting hurt. I mean, you take into account some of these wrestlers work indie dates. So, you know, working the indie dates on top of, say, you know, your dates coincide with the next set of tapings. You know, anything can happen. We know the mo the biggest injury in the outside of the most recently the Eddie Edwards one that comes to mind was and I, I I don't remember how long ago it was but the um it was Daphne she was wrestling I want to say her name was Rosie Lotta Love or I I don't remember but anyway she delivered a power bomb or something and I forgot what it did but it really hurt Daphne and there was this big old you know big old thing backstage and you know that was really one of the many stains that the company had during that time so yeah I I mean we know wrestlers injuries happen you, you know I think the thing with Rosemary that type of injury the ACL I mean so many wrestlers uh, have uh, injured that I mean, I think of a couple years ago, uh, Seth Rollins, when he was giving a powerbomb off the turnbuckle and he landed, you know, he landed and gave the move, but, you know, towards ACL or it might have been MCL. So to answer the question, I don't think it's unsafe. I just think of it's wrestling. You know, things happen. It's no different than pro professional sports. Things happen. It doesn't necessarily mean that it's unsafe. It's just you take into account the training, and then with these wrestlers wrestling on the indie scene or wherever else they're wrestling, on top of working the tapings, things happen. Absolutely. Anyway, uh, that's the questions of the week. Make sure that you do ask more for next week. Although I'm not here, Ro will answer them with uh, whichever host he's he's doing the show with. So uh, please do so below, and also hit the subscribe button and those kind of things. And uh, next week is the new tapings, isn't it? On on Impact, is that right? Yeah, I believe so. On to Canada. Yeah. On to Canada, and it's exciting times for me because when uh, we had the whole. BQ is greater than Cody thing. I said to you, if you're going to the Canada tapings, please hold up an Adam is greater than Rose sign. So we'll finally see next week if anyone who listens to our show actually went along and did that. I've got my fingers crossed, bro. I really have. I will mark out something silly, even more so than when I appeared on Impact a few years ago in the crowd on the front row. So uh, I'm looking out for that one. All right, let's dive into this week's show anyway. Um, what did you think of it, first of all? Uh, uh, once again, I mean, it just, it didn't do anything for me this week. I, I mean, there were some high, high points, obviously. I just, I don't know. Um, and it, it happens. That's so that's all I can say. Um, I, I think it was a bit better than that, but yeah, I, I think it ended on a, on a bit of a bum note. I think they should have had the tag match as the main event and, uh, well, sorry, the, the tag title match as the main event, as opposed to having it at the opening of the card. But anyway, um, one thing I forgot to do at the top of this show today, actually, which I should have done. And, you know, I'm not for what, one for, you know, just giving rhetoric out for the sake of giving it. And, you know, we have wrestlers die all the time on us. But, the, you know, the show started with it in memory of Vader. And Vader was one of my favorite wrestlers of all time. And this was probably about half a dozen wrestlers who I could truly say I think were incredible for the business and and really shaped how a certain division or a certain era felt and for me Vader was 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 basically the greatest big guy I think ever to to wrestle in the ring and I remember as a kid watching him thinking do you know what this guy is scary you know and I, I it was the last time I most probably really bought into it's real you know as a kid and and Vader to me it kind of personifies all of that. And it was a real shame to see that he, he lost his uh, battle with, with uh, heart, fa well, heart failure, a heart condition uh, earlier on in the week. So um, rest in peace. It's time. It's time. Anything to add on that, Ro? Uh, just quick. You know, he was the first wrestler. And at the time, you know, as a little kid, hearing him do a moonsault, I read that he used to use the moonsault as a finishing move. And, you know, during that time, I was just accustomed to cruiserweights doing high flying moves. To so to see him d do that, and then it took me later on to kind of appreciate what he was, you know, the type of wrestler he was, because I'd seen him during the time in WWF, and in WWF he never really was in the title picture. He was just a guy, 
And then I happened to look back in the early WCW where, you know, he was a big deal. So it's unfortunate. I mean, I think what he gave to wrestling, he, you know, along with two guys like Bam Bam Bigelow and, uh, you know, they laid the pathway for these larger wrestlers not to be limited. So now we see guys who don't look like they have the body type to do a 450, to do shooting star presses or whatever the case may be. So, you know, rest in peace to Vader. And uh, it, it was absolutely criminal that he never got a world title in WWF as it would have been at the time. But there you go. Uh, that's Vince for you. Right. On to this week's show then. OK, so we start with a bit of a flashback of Moose and Eli Drake. Um, and, you know, now he's now going to face Austin Aries. But we kind of just flew straight into the tag match. Um, so it was a bit of a strange open, really. Um, but... As a match, I thought, that, well, this was the match of the night, just mainly because there wasn't many matches on the card. But uh, this was what we kind of hoped it was going to be, uh, because we've talked about it before. Last time they met, it wasn't very fluid, uh, but this was really very good, I thought. The match was good. I just, the result, like, and maybe I just kind of felt like it was too soon, because essentially you're talking about z &E. They win the titles from Steiner and Eli. They have one title defense, and then they drop them here. And I get it. This was, you know, solely based on LAX getting their groove back. And like I said, the match was great. I, I kind of wish this was something that they could have built more towards. Um, now, you know, LAX is champions again, and I feel we might run back into what we always run into. They run through all the teams and then no one to work with. And I hope in Z and E's future they continue to tag because I feel what they brought to the tag team division, while it seemed like it was a short period of time, was something fresh. And I think that's what we've been talking about. We got we finally got a solid tag division, so we can't really afford to be splitting guys up. Just talking about you know the chemistry that the guys have got in the ring. Um, there, there was a lovely section where I it was like, like three moonsaults in a row where they were getting out of each other's way in the corner. I don't know if you remember this this segment where uh, it, it was like a, a power bomb followed by a standing moonsault followed by a moonsault off the, the turnbuckle. It was, it was a, just a lovely sequence and. Uh, I just thought it was very good. The only criticism I would have of this match, you know, and, and you know I'm a huge fan of LAX, and as I said, Santana, I'm convinced he will be a world singles champ one day. He, uh, he's that good. Was that Ortiz looked like at times that he was setting up the moves by standing in weird positions that didn't seem to go with the flow. That's the only criticism I got this match. Other than that, it was excellent. You know, there was a few times where... Ortiz just felt like he was stumbling into a position so that someone could then hit another move and it felt orchestrated at times. I didn't feel it with Santana, but, but Ortiz was very noticeable that uh, it sometimes he just looked awkward by getting into that place where, you know, the next move could be hit. I, I don't know if this is something that you noticed at all. My only thing, and I've mentioned this before when they had faced each other, um, I think it was a number one contendership. It seems like Santana, Z, and uh, Everett, they can go into a gear like that fast-paced X-Division style type of match. And I don't think Ortiz can do that. I think his is more in lines of kind of like hard, hard-hating, kind of uh, calculated a little bit. So I, I kind of just felt like, you know, everyone's all kind of getting their stuff in and then there, you know, there he is. So, but uh, congratulations to LAX. They're tag team champions. I believe this is their third time reign. Their th yeah, their third time uh, winning the belt. So that's great for them. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I think one of the best iterations of LAX as well. But let, looking forward to seeing where this goes, because we'll come back to, you know, in the segment in a little while uh, when it was backstage. We'll talk about that. But let's move on to the, the next part. So Jimmy Jacobs did a segment with Congo Kong backstage. Now, I'll, I'll get your thoughts on this very quickly before I'll, I'll tell you what I thought. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> I thought I was waiting okay. for you. Um, you know what? Yeah, I mean, it, it, I found it funny because they were selling the point that he was beatable when he lost via count out. So, I, you know, I, I, I did kind of find that funny. But, you know, I'm just interested to see see this whole stable with this newly found stable with Jimmy Jacobs, Kong Kong, and now Matt Seidel. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't know if Matt Seidel's part of it or not. I mean, maybe they, they hinted at that, but I just thought it was a, a random thing, you know, where they were attacking Brian Cage as opposed to siding with Seidel. But um, 
the, the thing I found interesting about this was that Jimmy Jacobs kind of promoted in a different style to how he usually does. He's, I, I don't know. It, it just felt different, his promo style this week. And um, But having said that, he was still really engaging. There's something about this guy. When he talks, you actually listen and you're kind of drawn into it. And I think he's excellent on the mic. The other thing as well is that uh, Congo Kong looks like he had, he's had a haircut or something. Uh, he looked odd in the background. It was like he'd been to a beauty salon earlier in the day and, you know, they they, straight, they straightened out his hair and stuff. <laughs> but anyway, as I said, I always notice these random things. But I really enjoyed this 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 promo. I thought it was very good, actually. Um, so, yeah, I, anyway, it, it is what it is. And, uh, yeah, let us know, what, listeners, what, what you think. Did, did you, any of you see what I saw and just thought it was a different side to Jimmy Jacobs? Just, I, I don't know if it was mannerisms or whatever it was, but whatever it was, it, it still worked very, very well. Right. Okay. So we had then a, a bit of a, a flash, well, flashback, flash forward to what's happening in the show where they previewed some of the matches uh, before going back to the ring where we had uh, K Impact come to the ring. And, you know, I'm, I'm a huge fan of KM and, you know, this segment, it was it was actually all right. I quite enjoyed it, you know, and Falabar came out. Although what Falabar did, was it heelish? No, I suppose it wasn't really. It's, it's, it's the kind of thing that that faces do, but but Steiner's now a face, apparently, to go up against KM. I kind of wish KM would have won this match, to be honest, because it, it doesn't really do much for the feud, does it? Yeah, I, you know, the thing I didn't like is, in, and I mean, I guess we've seen this in wrestling before. I think when I think of squash matches, you always think of this larger wrestler, uh, you know, running through a smaller guy. KM, you know, is this larger guy in fighting someone who's in, you know, in their mid 50s and was made to look like a joke. And I, I get it, you know, he's comic relief right now. But I just didn't like the fact that you could have had Steiner win. But I mean, to have someone, you know, in their mid 50s, you know, who's, you know, let's face it, you know, he's kind of a one shot deal type guy you know you might appear you might not see him on our tv screens you know till you know months down the road and you have him just run through km like km was nothing i that just didn't really uh sit well with me yeah i mean as i said it doesn't really advance the feud at all does it because km's got his bit of his comeuppance now um and, and sadly i was actually disappointed when richard justice didn't come out <laughs> I, I, I know it sounds weird but i'd actually would, would have preferred to see richard justice as opposed to uh to scott steiner and the thing is you know you bring out a guy like scott steiner at least give him some mic time you know don't just use him as a wrestler you know because he could have cut some you know a really good promo on km you know that would have been interesting have the two of them go back and forth but no he came out and they fought and that was it so, um, but the, the, yeah, the, the, the ending, well, not the ending of the match, the result of the match just, yeah, it did nothing for me. You know, it just makes KM look weak. And I don't know where this feud goes from here. It's, it's a shame. I, I didn't want them to split these guys up. I just hope it was, maybe this is the, the, the finish, you know, to get KM back on side and apologize to Falabar. I don't know. But, uh, anyway, it was what it was. So we moved into the Slammiversary press conference. I said last week, Moose is a charisma vacuum. And once again, even in this bit, he just, Aries just made him look silly, didn't he? You know, Aries is just so much more talented on the mic. And I know people are uh, agreeing with you on this one, Ro. There's a few, quite a few who, who started to come around to my way of thinking, but I just don't get Moose at all. Yeah, you know, he, he's been uh, really selling. Like, I think the – and someone had mentioned this thing. I'm so bad with remembering these names. I apologize. But I, but they had mentioned they think that the the promos that we're going to get, you know, between the both of these two leading up to Slam Reverse is going to be some excellent stuff. And I agree. Um, you know, you see the, the jabs that Austin Aries has taken thus far. You know, and here's Moose. Can Moose do it? Can he get it done? And I think, and I'm I'm sure we'll have a preview show, but I just think having Moose, if Moose were to go over, and even if for a short reign, I think you could do more with Moose as champion than having Aries uh, retain. Because then next, who you're gonna have to face? The company right now really doesn't have any main event caliber type 
of uh, world title contenders. So yeah. and so Moose, I guess by default. So I think him getting this opportunity and you know what, what, regardless of the result of the match, I mean I think it's gonna help him. You know so. But yeah, we just have to we have to see. But yeah, I'm interested in seeing the uh, promo work from both of these two. But a- Aries has been gold. I think that uh, at this point, possibly that the management don't know who's going to win that match. I, I genuinely believe that. I think that maybe they they're seeing how Moose fares in the ratings, you know, on TV or the feedback online or whatever, and just to see how he runs with the ball, so to speak, you know, in the build up to it. And I wouldn't be surprised if they're undecided whether to keep it on Aries or Moose anyway. Um, I also think that Eli Drake could be a factor, that if Eli does sign a long-term contract or even a year extension or whatever it may be, then quite possibly uh, it'll be Eli challenging Austin Aries instead of Moose winning. So I think there's a lot of factors still to play and we still got, was it just over a month uh, before we we find out what's happening. So uh, yeah, anyway, it was, as I said, as I keep saying about a lot of these segments, you know, it was what it was. It wasn't a great segment except for Austin Aries came out looking like, you know, the real deal and Moose looked second rate compared, I suppose, is what I'm trying to get at. So then we went over to Eddie Edwards driving like a maniac in Boston, uh, crashing into his recycling bins, uh, pounding on his door and then uh, running into his house and having a bit of a meltdown. Um, thoughts, Ro? You know, this one, I like, I don't know where they're, where they're going with him now because... I, I like to believe, and I mean, later on in the show, you know, we'll dive more into it, but it seems like Sammy and OVE have moved on. So I'm guessing that Eddie's going to engage in a feud with Tommy Dreamer, but they got to really find something to capitalize on this. You know, you, this whole madman thing, I mean, you know, he, he's already, I guess, quote unquote, got his revenge on Sammy. Like, they need to find something else for him to do. And, I mean, I know some people probably aren't really looking forward to a feud with Dreamer. But, yeah, I just, I, I mean, I don't know. I really don't know what to think of it all. Yeah, it does seem like at this point, you know, that Sammy's done with the feud. and Which is good, you know, because it has been going on a long time. But I also think there's enough legs in there that if they want to come back and revisit it after whatever happens with Tommy, that, that there is room to do that. So, um, yeah, it, I thought the segment was quite good. And... And as I've been saying for weeks, you know, Eddie's finally found character and he was he was excellent in this section, even if once again, I hate the old see a reflection in the mirror kind of thing. You know, um, I, I, I think it's stupid, uh, but <laughs> there you go. Uh, they've done it. And I'm trying to think when they last did it. Yeah, I remember Hulk Hogan seeing the ultimate warrior in the mirror once, which was ridiculously crazy. And didn't um, Winter or Katarina... Didn't she used to appear and disappear in the mirror as well, from memory? Yeah, well, it's it, it's never a thing to be proud of. And it's, it's one of those things in wrestling that they usually bring back up to say as, as a, a kind of evidence of it not being very good. And, and I wish they wouldn't do things like that. But it was still quite a good um, segment overall. So uh, straight on from that, we had Crazy Cam with Sammy and the, and the Chris Brothers. They really should buy a new camera because it, it keeps flickering in and out. But uh, yeah, so they did a section on Pentagon Junior and Phantasma. Once again, pretty solid, pretty s- standard. As you as you said at the top of the show of this review today, that it, it just passed by, and and I think that OVE are going to have to start doing something different because this was same old, same old, wasn't it? Yeah, but it seems though now, and the thing what I like, and we see them moving on is it seems that now it's more the, them as a group because when you think of Callahan, the past few months it had really just been Callahan and OVE. Well, the Chris brothers were in the background. So this was something that it seemed like they were doing together as a unit, calling out uh, Phantasma and uh, Pentagon. So um, I had no problem with it. In it. And like I said, they've moved on. That's why it's interesting to see where they're going to go with Eddie. And I know you said that there's still some legs in it. But, I mean, it just would seem silly to see Callahan and uh, the Chris brothers, you know, go and start a feud with someone else. And then only to go backwards and back with Eddie again. So, Mm. it remains to be seen. Remains to be seen. So, next bit was Tyre versus Madison Rain. And... I know we've talked about Madison for the last few weeks, and although the match was surprisingly good, um, I, I just the, I hate what they're doing with Madison Rain. 
I re- especially at the expense of Tyre. I mean, they could have put anyone else in this position. They didn't have to put Tyre in it, take, eating another pin. She, she's been booked as just a, a nobody in the last couple of weeks. And, and I just find it really disappointing that a great character like Tyre is suddenly, you know, is, is, is taking pins off Madison Rain. I'm so sour on this whole Madison Rain redemption tour. And honestly, and I hate to be this guy, but it screams so much of uh, bias. And we obviously know the relationship she has with Josh. I just think like this. If you wanted to put Madison Rain in the title picture, let alone have her challenge for the Knockouts Championship, you could do that based off our own merit. You know, the accomplishments that, that she has, I think that's enough to give her that opportunity. You know, maybe you have a multi-woman number one contenders match and let her win and then go on. But this seems like the Madison Rain Redemption Tour. And it's hard for me to believe as a fan, seeing her beat Tessa in Tessa's second match, seeing her beat Taya. And I know Taya is... Uh, you know, hasn't won that many matches, you know, just getting back. But, the, you know, these are up-and-coming knockouts that are going to be around for the foreseeable future. It's hard for me to believe that going into Slam Slammiversary, Madison Reigns not walking out of there with the, with the knockouts championship. And I think if, and if that's the route that they go, I mean, I mean, I just think that's terrible. I just, I don't know if, if there's one blemish you know from these tapings it's this whole madison reigns redemption story i don't think it was needed at the expense of tessa and taya yeah and just uh, also the commentary on this uh frustrates me because josh does you know he, he talks about her being a mother and those kind of things and having a daughter but he doesn't say oh yeah by the way she's married to me it's my daughter you know so it, it just it frustrates me because he has mentioned it before but now it's just not even commented on it it just seems strange having said that uh, commentary all all night again don Callis is great there was a few things he said in the opening match that once again had me chuckling at, i can't remember off the top of my head where they were but he is really as excellent and we, we had a conversation about who we'd like to see on the on the mic and we talked about don west i think at this point don Callis is is great he he, he really is great he, he reminds me more of um it's not a bobby the brain but more of a almost a jesse ventura almost uh, anyway um so afterwards we had the sue young manic laughing once again not that it was a silly segment but i i can't see how madison ray poses any threat to sue young bearing in mind she's taken out rosemary she's taken out ali she's taken out the last two knockouts uh so i can't see how madison ray could be any threat but there we go that's what they're building to just like you wrote i hate it i absolutely hate it and then and then to make matters worse you think about there really hasn't been any follow-up ever since the last rights match from uh where Sue Young won the knockouts championship. So that's why it just it kinda worries me some and I mean we gotta see how it plays out. I mean in the end this could be an opportunity to give Sue Young a big win. But if you just, if I'm looking at past weeks and it just seems what I've been seeing with Madison Rain, I'm not too optimistic about Sue Young's chances against Madison Rain. So yeah, she's almost being booked like uh, Pentagon Junior in that she's got the belt, but she's been given no airtime at all to to care about the character. So, I mean, if anyone should be going through people, it should be Sue Young, you know, to, to show how dominant she is. But she's won two matches. <laughs> That's it. Anyway, uh, LAX Lair, we had the return of Conan. So, yeah. And once again, I just want to highlight Santana. I know people are going to start commenting and saying I'm in love with Santana here, but um, I thought he was excellent in this segment again. And I know it was only a little bit and those kind of things, but but he, him and Ortiz, I, I don't know, I just, I can't get enough of these guys. And, and I know they only did the bit, you know, making sure he was okay and then whispering to him as they went out, giving him hugs, but they really sell their parts brilliantly. And I just thought this whole segment was really good. Um, once again, you know, we're going to, pick up on the editing of it but overall i really like what they're doing with this i think it's really really good it's interesting um you see conan come back and obviously he shares the same sentiments that diamante had about king so you know i know in the past i've always said you know when lax is tag champions they get stale relatively quick not of a fault of their own but just for the simple fact of not having contenders so i kind of thought you know this angle where they weren't in the title picture it helped them so now you, that they have the titles 
you know we're still getting some continuity of this angle so i'm interested to see what happens because things don't seem right mm -hmm. well following on from that which was a very very strong segment i thought we had the best segment of the, of the night and they've really brought in killer cross and they've done some really stellar work with him. i thought his debut last week was amazing you know you better call the police um and this week you know the question that they should be asking is not why but why not i think they've just built this character brilliantly and i don't know what he's going to do and what kind of angle he's going to go into first of all but uh i just think he he looks awesome he looks absolutely amazing i know little about this guy but he just looks fantastic yeah i didn't know what to make of this originally because i kind of thought that he, we were going to get this guy who didn't really speak so to have him doing all the attacks and then you know there, he's being interviewed it kind of seemed kind of uh funny to me but yeah i'm really interested to see where they go i'm of the mindset they should have him feud with some of the people that he's attacked or at least the wrestlers you know that didn't give him something to do uh, up until they you know decide to put him in some type of feud or whatever so um it's gonna be cool to see um if i had to guess he's probably gonna go on some type of undefeated streak as well Might, yeah. maybe may, maybe not you know the similar to brian cages but i mean you don't have this guy attack you know attacking people for months only for him to lose his second match but hey who knows i mean we've seen it happen to tessa so anything's possible <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we then had a vignette for the Desi Hit Squad, and to be honest, this did nothing for me. It wasn't like, uh, unless I missed something, but the, the actual vignette wasn't, it was just random images of India, wasn't it? And some uh, Indian music over the top. I, you know, there, there was nothing about this segment that made me think these guys are the real deal, but there you go. Yeah, I, I, I think this came out, I want to say, after the GWN flashback. You know, it's good to finally get them to come after hearing them talk about it but i wonder if the damage has already been done because we hear that rohit raju is a part of it and you think about rohit raju and impact i mean how he's been used so you know to think that this this group is gonna really take impact by storm it rem you know remains to be seen I would have liked for them to do is have Rohit Raju maybe weeks leading up to their debut. You know, maybe he loses a match, he gets on the mic, and, you know, he's talking about, hey, you know, my fortunes are going to change when I have my guy, or something, you know, bringing us into it versus it just coming, you know, across as random. But um, I don't know, did you did you get the did you get the GWN? Uh, yeah, yeah we, we got it, although I, I flashed, uh, fast-forwarded through it. Uh, yeah, it was Sanjay versus Loki. Uh, on the spoilers I'm reading here to, to when we do the reviews, it, it did say it was after the, the Desi Hit Squad thing. But uh, yeah, um, to, just to, to finish off on, on that, yeah, there's nothing. They were announced months and months ago, and it just feels like, well, okay, we finally got there. And all we got was this pretty lame video package. You know, it didn't really show about how good they are or these kind of things. So we'll, we'll see. But um, obviously we then went over to India to, to see the, the Sanjay Dutt versus Low Key match. And I can't really comment on this because I fast forward these things each and every week. So uh, it, it's just one part of the show I don't like. I understand why they're doing it, trying to promote the network. Uh, but to me, it does nothing. Um, I'll just make a quick comment on it because I did the same only because the uh, match is still fresh in my memory. I think it was a nice, nice to have you know somebody who's still on the roster and Sanjay showing his you know a big moment for him because he was the one of the if not the only X Division guy long tenured uh impact guy to never win the X Division title so to air this match and this is something that happened just a little over a year ago I thought that was that was nice and I hope that something down the road you know they did decide to do I understand you know going back and pulling a AJ Styles match or a Sting match, you know, those are guys that, you know, a lot of fans that, you know, might gravitate to. But, you know, some use some of the the talent that you have now. And I mean, I like one I would use and I always uh, brag about this match because I loved it. But I'd really love for them to use the uh, gauntlet for gold where Eli won the Impact World Championship. You know, use something like that. That's something recent. You know, show some of the current wrestlers at their highest points within the company instead of always resorting back to things that happened 10, 15 years ago. Yeah, I know what you mean. I know what you mean. Um, just on, on the old uh, crowd in India, it was very good. But one thing I noticed as well is the crowd all night seemed quite good. Bearing in mind this is the last, you know, taping. But certainly for LAX, the crowd 
looked like crowds of old where they really seemed to be jumping. It seemed full in there. It, this is the best crowd I've seen in Impact for quite some time. Anyway, uh, so on to the main event. And I'll be honest with you, I watched this, but I can't remember watching it. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that most probably tells you more about the, the match than anything else. Uh, I, I'm sure I did watch it, uh, but I can't really remember much about the match. Uh, so I can't even say whether I thought it was good, whether it was bad. All I know is that if it flew by like that and registered not you know an inch on me, then why was it the main event and why was... Uh, you know, the tag title match, not the main event. I suppose you have to build the thing afterwards with Conan, but anyway. Yeah, so what, what do you think of this match? You know, it was a nice clash of styles. I mean, you're talking about Pentagon and Phantasma. You know, they bring in that Lucha Libre style, and then with the Chris Brothers OVE, you know, you're talking about more of strikes. So... I mean, you know, it was nothing spectacular, but I just thought it was interesting. And, yeah, I'm in agreement with you. I think it would have made more sense to have the tag team title match at, be the main event versus and then have this be kind of either opening or middle of the card. So, um, yeah, I just I, I thought it was cool. Um, obviously, Pentagon and Phantasma get the win. And then I thought that post-match angle, it, you know, continued the feud I guess that OVE has with Pentagon where they were trying to rip his mask off so I'm interested to see what happens next between the four of them yeah so yes I mean when I think back to it they could have ended with the tag team match uh, and then have the the LAX Eddie Kingston Conan kind of um, confrontation in the lair house as the closing scenes for the show which would have made sense as well but there you go uh it was what it was and yeah it looks like we're heading for a, a mask match mask on a pole match i don't know what this going to be but there's going to be some stipulation where he has to own mask i'd have thought the two of them if they lose which is never going to happen <laughs> never going to happen right so yeah that was the show this week and as you said at the beginning there were some high pots for me the high points being you know the opening match the kingston bit and also the the killer cross bit that they were absolutely the highlights and the rest of it was just meh it was all right wasn't it yeah pretty pretty much i would say the tag title match and uh, i actually liked the main event as well like i said i mean avalo was nothing that just kind of you know got me out of my seat but i just really liked kind of like the different clash of styles that really intri intrigued me sure so what's the uh, rundown for next week for the tapings in canada okay we're getting the debut of rich swan um former cruiserweight champion so um interested to see what he can bring i'm guessing he'd probably be thrusted into the x division so that's always great and then we're also gonna get Eddie Edwards as he plans to visit House of Hardcore so one would assume that he'll be calling out Tommy Dreamer since that's Tommy Dreamer's promotion we get the debut of the Desi Hit Squad and then I don't know if this is a title match but we're gonna get Matt Seidel versus Desmond Xavier yep so it looks like well that, that looks like that'll be a good match uh, have we seen these guys in the ring one-on-one -on -one before i don't think we have have we so that, that should be a treat for us all yeah so uh just a reminder before we go today uh please do make sure that you leave us any questions down below i won't be on the next two weeks uh bro will have a different co-host with him who will answer your questions also make sure to leave your answers for the trivia question uh the clues being this week I was one of the first few contestants on TNA's gut check. I lost to Austin Aries in my match. I tried to get a contract by interfering in matches, although not being signed. And when I thought I did sign, it ended up being a, a one-time only match at Bound for Glory. And finally, my finisher is one of the most famous finishers on the indie scene at the moment, and it's been sponsored by an adult website. So there you go. You should be able to get them all from that. Right. Um, unless there's anything else, Ro, Thanks for your time today. You too. Everybody take care. All right. We'll catch you in uh, three weeks.